So you're given a initial gift of $15,000. Again, that's a gift of upon graduation for college, but you end up not needing it. So what can we do? So let's kind of go over a couple options. So option number one, all right, is you are, you are able to find an investment, and I'll talk about how you can earn these type of returns. And your return on your investment here is 12%. It's pretty high. It's a pretty good return on your investment. However, the higher the return on the investment, you know, usually the, you, the more risky something is and the longer that you can really kind of guarantee that you're going to earn those returns. So we're only going to say that, you know, you can earn those returns for 10 years. And we're going to compound this uh, yearly instead of monthly because actually most things are going to be compounded on like a yearly kind of basis or a monthly. So we're going to look at a compounded um, in for so this your account that you have is only going to be compounded yearly. Option number two is an account that's a little bit more standard, kind of middle of the road. That's going to be your rate is going to be 8%. So you're dropping your rate, but you're able to, that's a little bit more consistent um, rate. So therefore, your time is going to be 20. And therefore, again, n is going to be 1. That means it's only going to be compounded once a year. And then the last option is we're going to reduce the rate to 6% but we will increase the time. So the lower the rate, we're going to say, hey, you know what? Let's just forget about this money. So let's kind of look at these two scenarios. You get the $15,000 for college. You don't, you're not going to need the money for college. So you take the money. You put it into kind of a higher risk investment, 12%. You're going to get it for 10 years, right? And then once you're done college, you'll be starting like your new job, working on your second job, and you're going to use that money, right? Or you want that money. This next one is kind of like eh, option number two, maybe like in 20 years, um, you know, 8%, that's pretty much the historical average of the stock market. So maybe you're investing something in like, you know, good stocks and whatever else and the economy does well. So for 20 years, you earn that 8%. And, you know, 20 years, you're going to be 40. So maybe you'll buy like a second, you know, your house or a job or kids or whatever else. So you want that money at that time. The last example is going to be 6%. So maybe you're doing a little bit more conservative, maybe doing some stocks, some bonds, you know, some other things. But you don't really care about the money. You're like, thank you so much, parents, for giving me you know, this money. And I'm just going to put it away. I'm going to do my own thing, save money on my own. And then I'll come back 40 years and see what happened with that money. Right? So it's kind of like three different approaches. And with each approach, though, we obviously know that the longer the time, the better. But what about the rate? Like, how bad does that rate affect things? OK? So, if you guys work now, again, this is a little bit different. This formula is a little bit different because this formula, we're not continually adding. We're literally just putting this money into an account and letting it go, right? So the formula for this one and that's something that you guys hopefully went over in Algebra 2. We talked about that. That's the compound interest, um, uh, compound interest formula, all right? So let's go and look at this. A is going to represent our final amount. All right. And when you guys go ahead and plug this in for that one, you're just going to have $15,000 times 1 plus 0.12 over 1 raised to the 10th power. And this one, you're going to get 46,587.72. So what do you guys think for option two? Should option two, you think it's going to be higher? Reduce the rate? What do you think? Think reducing the rate's going to increase it? Hmm? Yeah. All right, well, let's see. So again, you put in the 15,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 over 1 raised to the 10th power. Oh, I'm sorry, raised to the 20th power. And guess what? 69,000. Uh, I don't know if this is a 4 over a 9. I'll say a 9. So guess what? And again, guys, does the rate impact your rate of your how much you get back? Yes, of course. But guess what? Again, look at what the rate is. The rate is going to be like your, your base. That is going, that's going to affect your growth, but it's not going to affect it as much as your time. right? And this is really n times t, but since we're compounding it once a year, that's why it's 1 times the years. So, but this years is going to have a greater effect, in this case, at least on our percentage. And then if we do 40 years, wait for it, wait for it, 
I'll just give it to you. Hold on a second. So plugging in the exact same numbers, and you guys can see in that one, we have $154,285.76, even earning a lower percentage. And again, I'm giving you guys this example in the one of saving small amounts of money over and over and over to here, you're getting a big chunk of money. But again, there's different ways you can earn higher percentages and lower percentages, and we'll talk about that at the end. But the main important thing that I'm trying to instill with you guys in these first two examples is the power of the time that you invest. Compound interest is great, but it doesn't do much on a short term. The power of compound interest comes over the length of time. And the longer that you're able to continually earn compound interest, the better that you're going to get on your return on your investment, right? And again, just even doing some thinking, you're like, ooh, eight, you know, 18 years old, have that much money? Like, what if I did 60 years, right? What if I use like my last amount of money? Like, what if what would happen to that amount of money, right? How would that trajectory grow? Okay. So again, the time is going to be giving us that power of the compound interest. Right? And time is very important. So compound interest is the one thing you need to understand, right? Earning money on your money. But the second thing is the power of time. Okay?